going to the hospital or to the dentist is a whole lot more expensive than what a helmet might cost you. If you look at the world of riders these days, we are seeing so many more enduro riders and people just really pushing trail riding further than we used to back not even that many years ago. There's a lot more jumps, guys are riding faster, gals are charging corners harder. It's just overall a more impressive time of riding. So we're seeing a lot of riders move to these full face enduro or trail helmets that are really breathable, uh, generally pretty light, really comfortable, some of them even with removable chin bars. And I personally have been on this mission to find the right trail full face helmet for me. Riding at Post Canyon in Hood River has really kind of pushed what I'm doing out on the trail and I do just want to protect my face and my dome. And one thing you're going to want to be looking for in these helmets or we think is a good idea is the ASTM 1952 certification. And that means that the shell of the helmet is rated to DH standards, meaning you can take hits at higher speeds or from bigger drops and things like that and still have good protection on your head. Now these are different than your DH helmet. A true DH helmet is going to take that protection level to the next level and it's, uh, it's pretty impressive what a DH helmet can do. With that comes a lot of weight and generally not a lot of breathability. So designers and companies have been putting out these helmets that are designed to take on kind of enduro to DH speeds, but provide a lighter, more breathable helmet. Starting on this end, this is gonna be kind of our lightest weight category, and we're gonna move on to heavier, more protective helmets. But on this end, we have the IXS Trigger FF. And this, the FF stands for full face. This is our lightest weight helmet at 600 grams in the small medium and about 650 grams in this medium large size. Now one thing I will say is I'm not a huge fan of when companies do uh, crossover sizes like that. I wish there was just more head molds because it just means it can fit your head better because heads are different from person to person. But I have found that with this helmet I actually really like the way it fits my head and we've tested it on several other people at Jensen and been really impressed with the fit on this. So despite having kind of these crossover molds, it's been really comfortable. Now one other part of that is that they actually have the retention dial back here that really cinches down in kind of 360 degrees around your head. It's super comfortable. As you can see on the back here, we have tons of vents going on. So this thing is incredibly breathable and lightweight. Up in the front, it has a pretty good size opening up here, so you can kind of like lean back, get a water bottle to squirt in there, um, and just overall really comfortable. Now a couple of small gripes I have with this is, uh, one is the visor is not uh, movable. And for these being enduro helmets, it would be great to have that because you could tuck your goggles up here. I will say you can flip your goggles around for climbs and have the strap kind of run across there, but I would have liked to have seen uh, a little bit going on there. Another gripe uh, that I have uh, on this, and it's one, it's not a big concern for me, but a lot of people are looking for that, is the rotational impact protection. So things like MIPS, and this does not have MIPS. But another feature that I am a big fan of is the Fidlock strap. And this is basically just a magnetic latch. And you can see just how easy it is to get that on and then also to get that off. Makes it really easy to pull this on and off while you're on the trail. Uh, if you decide to climb without a helmet because you have just a long fire road climb, this is a good option for you to just pop it off. Now this is a non-removable chin bar version. Uh, so you are in full face the whole time. And uh, I actually think, after doing a lot of testing, that this is going to be the helmet that I choose. Uh, and a big part of that is I like the classic kind of half shell almost look of it or design, uh, even though it is a full face. I just like the way that looks because if I'm going for a full face helmet for DH riding, I'll go with a DH helmet. We're going to step to the next helmet that's going to be pretty similar. Uh, in weight. This is only about 50 grams heavier um, in the, well, a little bit more than that. It's about 690 grams for the smaller sizes and just a smidge over that for the bigger sizes. 
Um, but again, incredibly breathable. You can see there's tons of very big vents on here. Um, and one of the things that some reviewers have noted is that this one seems to transmit noise a fair bit and not in a bad way. Uh, it means you can actually hear people around you while you're riding. But if you are looking for that serene, uh, quiet ride, uh, these vents around here actually make it so you can hear a lot. And so this may not be that ideal setup. But part of that is that this thing's nice and light and it, um, you can hear really well. Now this one does have MIPS in it. So that's probably where we're seeing some of the weight difference between these. And MIPS is gonna be that rotational impact protection. And so um, if you're looking for that, this is a really good full face lightweight option, uh, kind of opposite of this IXS here that comes with that rotational protection. Now it does have the adjustable visor and you can see it goes up a, a decent amount here. You could get some goggles in there. It's most likely gonna have just a little bit of overhang, but nothing too bad. Now, one thing I like about both of these helmets that's um, pretty nice is they don't have a crazy big uh, or tall chin bar here. So that keeps it pretty low in your vision so that you're, you're not like obstructing your view as you're charging down the trail. Uh, other than that, this helmet is just incredibly comfortable. It does not have a dial adjust on the back. So this is gonna be more important to get the right size the first time for you. It also has the Fidlock strap, which again, for me, is a big selling point. Next up is this one from Fox. Uh, this is the Fox Pro Frame, and they do have one called the Drop Frame that is a very similar helmet to this. Uh, except they lose the chin bar and it is just like a full ear coverage. Um, and you can see Kurt Voorhees rides that one quite a bit. But in this uh, form, you can see massive venting up here and along the chin here. Uh, just makes this thing super breathable. It is just about 50 grams uh, heavier than what we saw in the TLD here. So it runs up just a little bit around the 750 mark, um, but incredibly comfortable. I will say out of this test, uh, the IXS and this were probably the best fit for my head. And if you can kind of tell, I have kind of a narrow profile on my head, not very big. Um, and so this and this tended to have a little bit more of a narrow profile. Uh, and the Troy Lee was not bad either on that, but I think the Fox just fit me just a smidge better there. Um, on this one, we do have the Fidlock buckle again, and we do have MIPS on the inside, which is great. And one thing that's really cool is just look at how massive these vents are here. Again, this is all about breathability and making this thing comfortable when you're climbing. Now, a little bit of a knock. Again, we don't have an adjustable visor. This is breakaway, so you know when you do have a wreck, it will pop off instead of dragging your head along, so that is a good thing. Uh, but I would have loved to have seen that just because these are going to be used for people who are doing more enduro type of riding or even just out here where during the summer months it's really dusty. Now again, we don't have any sort of fit retention system on here. So again, make sure your sizing is a little more dialed. But the good thing with both this and the TLD is that there are lots of sizes to choose from. Next up is a relative newcomer here and this is the 100% Trajecta, and we are definitely moving more into the enduro side of things. Um, this helmet actually surprised me a little bit in that this is a size medium, and I almost always wear medium sized helmets, maybe even on small medium. And uh, this thing was pretty snug when I first put it on. I do believe that it's going to slowly, uh, you know, kind of form the, the cheek pads and everything so it'll be more comfortable. Uh, but I don't want to, uh, like this definitely wasn't uncomfortable. It was just definitely more snug than what I, I was experiencing here. Uh, one small gripe I do have with this is part of the additional protection that's going on here is this chin bar. And for me, it was just a little bit up in my vision, just a smidge. It's not a big deal, um, but just again, when I was going through these helmets, I found that this one just stood up a little bit more in that vision. But a big win on this helmet is actually inside, and that is that this is running um, what they call Smart Shock, and that's 100%'s version of MIPS or like Liat turbine technology. And basically, it's a rotational 
uh, movement of your pads here that just gives you that impact protection at oblique angles. And so you can see these little dots in here. Those are just kind of like a, a viscous or a, you know, a rubbery material that allows that to just shift and move. Now, a bit of a knock, but although it's probably a bit of an increased safety feature is the um, D-ring buckle system. If you're used to doing a downhill strap, this isn't going to be a problem for you, but it is a little bit of an extra step. Um, you know, it's a little bit harder than what you're doing with Fidlock. And again, for me and doing this for mostly like trail riding with like some enduro-y type of stuff, uh, this makes this more of almost like a light duty park day helmet, if you will. And uh, again, we have a few things going on here. We do have an adjustable visor, but it is pretty tough to move. It kind of locks into different spots and you can move it, but it's not just gonna go real easy for popping your helmets up uh, or popping your goggles up. So uh, I would like to see that be a little bit easier, but it is adjustable and can kind of get it in and out of your vision pretty easily. Again, no sort of uh, dial retention system on this, so you are going to make sure that you get the right size in that helmet. And this one weighs right in the 800 grams range, so it is just kind of moving up the scale. Now we get to this one, and this is by far uh, the heftiest, but I don't want to say it feels hefty. When I put this on my head, I was actually really surprised because this is the most protective helmet, and this is the Giro uh, Switchblade from Giro, obviously. And this is a removable chin bar, and that's where some of that heft comes from. Uh, you know, it just takes a little bit more to have all the mechanisms in here that lock this chin bar in place. Now, this is a DH rated helmet, both in the full face version like this, or if you pop this off, it still holds that DH certification for this style and it's kind of an interesting helmet and I'll actually try it on here in just a second um, because it actually covers your ears as you're riding and you'll see um, quite a few riders on this um, who do kind of this enduro stuff um, but the the chin bar here actually provides quite a bit of protection and I was pretty shocked with this helmet because uh, bell helmets generally don't fit me very well. They tend to be a, a round head profile. And so I was expecting the Giro, which is a sister company to them, to kind of have a similar fit and to not fit me personally very well. But I put this thing on and it was incredibly comfortable. It does have a dial retention system, which I was stoked to see. Um, and it really just was super comfortable. and. Despite it being the heaviest at 950-ish grams, uh, honestly, I didn't feel like I was wearing that heavy of a helmet, even with the chin bar. And then you ch pop the chin bar off, shave some of that weight, and as a three-quarter helmet, it was really comfortable. Now, inside, it does have MIPS in there, which again, that adds to the protection, but also to the weight on there. Um, and it is a D-ring buckle, which I would have loved to have seen Fidlock in there. Uh, out of these helmets, this is definitely going to be the warmest. You can see it's got fairly minimal channeling going on here. The venting is just not quite as impressive as some of these. But if you're looking for protection or you're looking for something for like cooler weather riding, this switchblade is going to be absolutely phenomenal for those kind of things. Now, we went over five helmets here and that is by no means the full run of what's available in all of this. There are options from Bell and Liad and other brands. Uh, so, you know, you're going to want to check those out as well. But we definitely thought these scored highest uh, because they have the DH certification and because they just fit really comfortably. They had great breathability and lots of other really cool features. Now, if you want to dig into these further, we're going to have links in the video to all these products. You can look at all the different features, certifications, and everything else. Uh, and if you have any questions, reach out to a gear advisor, and they'll be more than happy to help you kind of dig through these and, and get the one that's going to fit you right and meet your needs specifically. As always, thanks for watching and keep pedaling.